I'm here at HPE Discover with Martin Fulton, and you've got an AI accelerator that sounds pretty fascinating that's uh, in progress. Yes, yes, we are developing a new type of AI accelerator that uh, uses analog compute cores to accelerate matrix vector multiplication, which is the most uh, performance and energy demanding uh, part of uh, deep learning and neural network acceleration in general. And so we are using our Memristor devices, Memristor Crossbar Array, to perform matrix vector multiplications at a much higher degree of parallelism than conventional digital accelerators. And because of that high degree of parallelism, we can achieve higher power efficiency and higher compute density. And compute density translates to lower cost, and higher power efficiency relates to higher performance because today most of the workloads are power limited. And so, for, for people who might not know, what, it, what do you mean when you say analog compute? Yes, so uh, typically uh, in the digital domain, you have a set of multipliers and adders, a digital compute units that sequentially process your input data and accumulate results. With the analog computing, we are actually using a memory store crossbar where one neuron is represented by a column in this crossbar that adds currents in analog domain, adds electrical currents, and each of these electrical current is uh, basically a product of input vector element times the weight represented by memory store conductance. So basically we are using memory stores not just an element to store the weights, but also as compute elements, as multipliers and adders. So we don't have a need for any additional digital multipliers or adders, which saves energy. We also don't have any need to move the data from storage element to compute element, because as I say, the, the data sit in the accelerator, they sit where the compute is done. So it's a true in-memory compute. So you're really getting rid of a lot of latency there, I assume. We are adding, getting rid of a lot of latency and a lot of power, a lot of energy that is needed to move data from either external or on-chip memory to the compute units, and then we do that compute in a single step, very parallel. So it is analog because we are adding currents in an analog fashion and compute output value as an analog value. And we do need to convert that analog value back to digital later on because as you uh, propagate the input activations through the neural network, you have to move it between different layers. And to do that, we need to move between different cores in our compute architecture. So at one point, you need to convert from analog to digital. And that's part of the secret sauce, how to do that analog to digital conversion. Where do you do that? Because if you do it too early, you incur too much penalty, and you basically uh, reduce your advantage or completely eliminate it by burning that extra energy in the analog to digital conversion. But we do that uh, in a uh, smart way, so that despite this overhead of the analog to digital conversion, we get a leadership performance and performance per watt. Do you have a, a measurement yet around how much power savings this results in? Yes, so we have some uh, uh, initial projections based on the FPGA demonstrator that we developed. The demonstrator allows us to measure a full chip performance on real world workloads. Now the FPGA doesn't allow us to measure power, but we estimate the power based on simulations. And uh, when we put the two numbers together, we are trending to be at least 10 times better in performance per watt than GPUs for convolutional neural networks and uh, up to thousand times better for some of the uh, recurrent networks like long short-term memory models. Even, so, even 10 times better for, over GPU sounds impressive. Yes, yes, absolutely. And we are planning to further improve the architecture uh, and make sure that it's scalable. And that's one of the other advantage of our approach to analog computing. The memory store cells, which is a type of resistive memory used, uh, scale very well from one process node to another. So we are hopeful that we will be able to scale it in the future to 16 nanometer and, before, and, and beyond. That, that's impressive. Thanks, Martin. Thank you.